Climate change has been one of the most popular issues inside the government and the media. It's even at the water cooler and people are starting to ask questions about what's next. So we're getting a lot of differing opinions, but I want to show you something. The possibility, maybe just government actually blocking the sun. Is it possible? Was Mr. Burns from The Simpsons only telling the future? That's what we'll discuss Today, I think it's important that we look at who stands to gain from all of this information. Let's begin. Very first thing I want to show you is just that. Congress is allocating billions of dollars in subsidies to promote the expansion of carbon capture technology. So here we have it. We have this issue. There's too much carbon dioxide. And now billions of dollars are being spent on all of these different things. They are saying that the earth is warming and therefore we need to stop it. There are companies out there that are going to make literally billions of dollars on this. You can decide what side of this you are on in this argument i am bringing you the economics when you watch the news you get bias when you watch the news you are always going to have advertisers and you know they're basically putting their propaganda into you and here the difference is that i am simply bringing you the information then showing you one extra step and that is who stands to gain and you do what you want with that how does that sound you know, a lot of people, they are simply on one side or the other, and I understand why. That's why uh, we've gotten into this mess in the first place. But now we can see for the carbon capture that there will be some companies out there that do very well. As an investor, you can look at that and suggest, wait a second, this might be something I need to take a look at. The next is this report out of the White House that says... Uh, basically, they're talking about solar radiation modification, okay? And we've heard of this before. It's not the first time. They also refer to it as geoengineering. You've probably heard of that. Now, uh, we could go in depth in this, and I used to cover this type of thing on the channel before. A lot of people would say, yeah, what are you talking about? This report is directly from the White House, their own website. Now, we've seen tests that have happened before. Uh, you know, hot air balloon test and, you know, coming out of airplanes test, and all these things, tests. But the government wants to see what, what would that take to actually implement. So according to them, they're not doing anything beyond any tests. Companies aren't doing that, just, just tests. But then you even have the European Commission coming out related to that and suggesting, no, no, we shouldn't be doing this. In the context of accelerated global warming, deliberate large-scale intervention in Earth's natural systems, referred to as geoengineering, such as solar radiation modification, is attracting more attention. However, the risks, impacts, and unintended consequences that these technologies pose are poorly understood, and necessary rules, procedures, and institutions have not been developed. They introduce new risks to the ecosystem and so on. Now, interesting. So the EU, we know all the downsides about the EU, but what about the good stuff? We've seen countries saying, no GMOs. We don't want your GMO stuff. Enough with that. So we've seen some good stuff coming out of the EU. Um, there's also some not so good stuff. But I would say in this case here, they're saying we don't like this geoengineering thing. We don't know the unintended consequences, and so we shouldn't be doing it. That's positive, that's good, and hopefully that stays in place. So you can see the White House doing one thing, and the European Commission is kind of saying, uh, you know what, maybe not the case. Maybe we shouldn't do that. EU's carbon border tax, a new report shows Africa stands to lose $25 billion every year. So essentially what they're saying is, we are charging a tax uh, on our companies if they're a polluter. Oh, but if you're importing it from somewhere else, we're going to charge those countries and companies. Now, I understand what's happening here. They're trying to level the playing field. It makes sense because you can't just offshore your pollution to another country without that resulting in some sort of tax. Um, there will be loopholes. There's going to be ones that get waivers, all that. It, it happens every time. Um, but what we can see here is that there are these charges that are being put into place, and it's going to make 
consumers spend more money for the necessities that they need and not so necessities. Either way, we're talking about permanent inflation, at least for the foreseeable future. We will not be able to get away with that. And this is one very big reason. Now, you could argue that this is beneficial because we're going to help the planet. But I show you the economics. And we can see that this will create more entrenched inflation because the producer prices will increase. That could go for foods that are imported, things that are edible. It could be products that you buy at your store. The dollar stores are uh, they're not too many today. They're few and far between today. But I think soon it's going to be the $5 and $10 store, the way things are looking. Then we have gas making up about 41% of U.S. power generation. This so-called bridge fuel overlook, overtook coal in 2016 as the country's number one source. And so you can see that coal is diminishing as the total there. Although natural gas is promoted as a bridge fuel to span the transition from coal to renewable energy, the country's vast network of gas plants, pipelines, and the regulations that govern them was largely built without the realities of extreme weather in mind. Facilities aren't uniformly winterized, and some rely on a single gas pipeline for supply. Many generators don't have the ability to burn an alternate fuel or keep backup gas on hand in case of emergencies. So there are problems with these systems. No system is perfect, in fact. And that's why you, the individual, should be taking this in and say, what do I have to do? What should I be doing if we can clearly see there's a problem here? And I think depending on your location, you've got to understand where you are. And uh, this is for your own household where you are and what is best suited for you. If you're in a place that has sun 300 days a year, solar panels seems very, very good. If you're in a place that is just dark and cloudy, like more than half the year, probably not the best thing. But maybe you're in an area where geothermal makes a lot of sense. Ask those questions. Get on the phone. Go on the websites. Start to do your due diligence for your area. You might be surprised. And there might be some people in your area that are doing the same thing, some online communities that are involved, and you can start getting that information. Look at your energy sources and understand what's available to you. Very good stuff. I've got some information that might be of interest to you. I'm listing it out and expanding it every single day now on my Discord. If you get on the Discord, you can get lots of free stuff. Oh, and by the way, giveaways are coming. Get on the Discord, I got the link. In the description so it's important for you the individual to understand your sources of energy because we cannot rely on the governments all the time what happened in texas oh power grid oh it's messed up all right you don't get any more energy power shuts off now that might be a small disruption if it's a you know a few hours if it's a day what if it's a week what if it's two weeks you're in big trouble. This is not a developing country where, you know, you're getting the brownouts that just constantly happen, blackouts that happen, rolling blackouts. You know, there are some places where they're used to it. They deal with that. They're already prepared. You, on the other hand, as in, you know, the general public, general public, not prepared. Get prepared. Okay? Seriously. Electricity production by source. This is just showing you, by the way, coal is increasing and increasing and increasing, despite what they've tried to do to coal. Share of electricity production by source. You could see, though, the changes that have happened. Uh, you know, you look at it, I mean, I was shocked to see that hydropower wasn't growing. They're just, they're just it's not growing, you know. And uh, that's one source that's obviously limited to a geographical region. But it would be nice to see more of that. Nuclear has declined significantly over the years, and this has been, you know, part of this contentious debate. We've got the Fukushima situation, but then at the other end of the spectrum, you know, you've got places where it's probably much more suitable to be using that, and they're not. So we'll see what happens with nuclear, but you can power a lot, certainly with that. And if that is the case, and they start to label nuclear as uh, ESG, and more countries do sign on to that, Watch uranium. Look at what happens with uranium. It's already very strong. Look at what happens. Keep your eyes on uranium if this occurs. Let me show you the next part here. 
Germany to earmark 900 million euros in subsidies for e-car charging systems. I'm just trying to highlight in this, and, and I'll show you more, that is basically saying, look, whether you agree with it or not, the government believes this, and they are going in this direction. Certain companies are going to have billions of dollars thrown their way, and you could decide what you want to do with that, all right? Italy aims to turn up renewable power two to two-thirds of the total by 2030. What's important here, again, is that these different things, whether it's solar panels, whether it's wind, they all use these different materials, raw materials, as well as there are companies that are generally managing these things, and you could be investing in that if you do believe that they'll continue to put that those billions and potentially trillions over you know the next decade or so they all have these goals 2030 2030 well they're going to be spending a lot of money and they're going to be a lot of subsidies and tax rebates and so on the world's biggest fusion experiment involving 35 nations faces faces new delays and potentially billions of dollars in extra costs so here we go whether it's fusion whether it's all these new types of technologies they're just you know, that they can't keep up, there's delays and all these things. So look at the usage of coal still being used today, even though they've been trying to bankrupt it all these years. So I would just pay attention to that. And again, have your personal energy situation in order as best you can. Many reactor costs surge, threatens nuclear's next big thing. Australia's coal exports by volume set to rise on Asian demand. You got to look at where you are exporting to if you are a country or if you are looking at particular companies to invest in. I would highly recommend checking out the source of where that stuff's coming from and who it's going to. Australia is set to expand because of Asia's expansion. Asia's got, I mean, clearly population growth like no other, as well as, uh, you know, a growing percentage of the GDP. So I would watch that as well. You got to understand resources. You got to understand these things. In this video right here, I talk about land, why land is so important and the advantages that you got to understand uh, very clearly right now. Click this link and I'll see you there.